if, if people haven't seen the, uh, the, the conversation between uh, Joe Rogan and uh, Donald Trump, that was, uh, that was super cool. I mean, I think, I think for, for a lot of people, it's like, you know, how do you know, how do you understand somebody, like, and, and what they're about? Um, you know, like, the, 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 the sort of far-left press has been going on and on about how, like, Trump is like Hitler, like Mussolini and Stalin combined, and you rolled them all into one, <laughs> and he's somehow worse than all three of them combined. These are people who have killed tens of millions of people. And, like, something's wrong with the press, guys. You know, something is wrong with the press. I mean, I, I, do, th I, do, I do think like the, that, that old school journalism, I call it the legacy media because it is kind of legacy media. Because it is, it is from a time when in order to learn any news, you had to aggregate the news to some central publication. And then, then some editor would decide what people should hear. And then they would print the newspaper with like a lot of, a lot of paper, uh, literally and then distribute that paper, and that's how you learn things. Um, but you obviously don't need that anymore. You've got the internet, so anyone can learn anything at any time. Um, yeah, that's why X is the future. Uh, it's, it's, where, it's citizen journalism, where you hear from the people, it's by the people, for the people, that's what it's all about. I think this is this, this is a super super big deal, and it's and it's absolutely fundamental and transformative uh, that the people actually get to decide uh, the news and the, and and what the, the narrative and what matters, and and that the because the legacy uh, media is basically you know controlled by a handful of editors in chief. That's it. That they decide uh, what's going to get published. Um, that's why I really encourage everyone out there to. To, to write stuff on the X platform and, and you know, other platforms too. But citizen journalism is the future. So Glenn, you mentioned earlier you had a uh, prediction about... All right, so before Glenn goes, goes here, this is very interesting. As you can see the title, I made this video. I said, The End of Kamala and the Media. Because what Glenn is going to say here is something I've been thinking and something I've been developing on my own. Because Glenn Beck, with this piece I'm going to show you, is, is going to explain fully what I believe is going to happen in the next 6 to 12 months. Glenn may think it's going to be a little bit longer. I think it's going to be 6 to 12 months. And I believe it's going to start tonight, tomorrow, or Sunday when Joe Rogan releases this podcast with Donald Trump. You see, I think... Elon Musk and Joe Rogan are going to usher in a completely different way of doing things. And the media is going to be toast. Listen to what Glenn says you know, in, this, in this piece. 2028? Yeah, so um, this is something I thought about uh, this week, earlier this week. And it, I, I, I was late on a prediction that I made this would fulfill a prediction I made in 2010, uh, and I was way too early on it, but I think it will happen by 2028. And we will know, I believe, by Monday, if this is going to happen. Okay. Uh, Joe Rogan can completely end this election. He can end it. And, and it's an incredible thing. I never get a good story. I only get bad press. Now, I will say this. It's a lot easier if you're a Democrat. If I were a Democrat... You'd get a lot of positive press. I would get a lot of positive yeah. press. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a creepy, corrupt business. And the, the media, to a large extent, acts as a propaganda arm for the Democratic oh, Party. It's not, it's not even believable. Yeah, it's believe, I mean, it's bizarre to watch. And mo you know, most young people, I think, are aware of it. I think most boomers still, unfortunately, read the newspapers and believe in CNN. But it's and, getting younger. Uh, yes. Let me tell you, it's getting for us for a conservative, yes. and you know I don't. But you know even, why I that consider is? myself it's a person. It's the internet. It's because the internet's giving so. people information that they're not getting from anywhere else, and they like the the very fine people hoax, the Russia Gate hoax, all these different things that they've done. They tried to pin on you. That's like it's a clear distortion of what you actually said. The bloodbath hoax. Yeah, I was talking about yes. the auto industry. Yes. It's yes. a bloodbath because Japan and, of and China 
are taking our order. And yes. I said, it's a bloodbath. They said, oh, he used the word bloodbath. He said, you know, if you, you don't win, somebody, it's going to be a bloodbath that's because right, they're going to take right. over. It's, that's it's exactly what you said. a terrible thing they do. But that's the problem with propagandists because they take things out of context and ultimately what they do is they diminish their own credibility because people don't want to listen to them anymore because they see that they've done that and they recognize what's going on and they feel insulted. If that changes this election, one way or the other, dramatically changes this election... This will be the last election that ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN has won the debates and two, has any real role to play in elections in America. They have so discredited themselves, but they still hold that position. They have a lock on that. But that will change because both parties will say, holy crap, the new media is where all of the juice is. And yeah, that is exactly what I think is going to happen. You're seeing this. Donald Trump is proving this out right now. He is doing every podcast you can possibly imagine. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's, he's been on this show, I think, more than he's ever been. Uh, he's, he's on everybody's show, and so is J.D. Vance. You, you saw the J.D. Vance uh, interview. Yes, yeah, right? someone, someone had an interesting note on that, that the top comment, it was on, he was on th with Theo Vaughn. Yeah. And the top comment was, I can't believe they told me this guy was weird. He's like the most normal guy I've ever heard speak before. Right. So he goes on Theo Vaughn, big podcaster. His audience is like, well, I thought this guy was Adolf, man. I thought this guy was, you know, unhinged, unstable. You know, all the words, all the adjectives. And real people who don't watch the news, who, who, who can't stand MSNBC, ABC, CBS, real people, younger people, older people, people like you, people like me, who don't have to sit there and be spoon-fed by the media, are turning around going, well, no, no, the dude's fine, man. He's, he's funny. He's relaxed. He's relatable. He's cool. He's rich. He's got a beautiful wife. Pretty much checks all the boxes, doesn't he? Something like that. And I, I think that that's hitting a lot of people in reality that way. And these interviews have really showcased that type of stuff. And you will see people, the, the ones that are the most effective are not necessarily the people like me. Because mm -hmm. I'm coming at it in more of a journalistic way. Somebody who's really well informed. Watch what he does. Watch what Tucker does. He hit on it. People don't want the journalistic just speaking at me. They want to be, re you want to, be I'm trying to do it. I'm trying to be more relatable with you. Glenn's going to do that as well. So, or tries to be. Uh, <laughs> where Joe Rogan is just going to ask the questions. He doesn't follow everything. This isn't his, you know, gig on politics. He's just asking the questions that you would ask. Yeah. And he has such a massive audience that if Donald Trump does well on that show, it could add four points. Okay, uh, If that happens, this will be the last election where those networks play the kind of role that they play now. So Absolutely. Can't wait. That's everything I'm looking to build for, where people have an alternative to find news but they can relate to the person talking. Joe Rogan could end the mainstream media tonight or tomorrow night. I think so. Remember what I said four years ago, I think mm -hmm. it was? Uh, CNN, we were on the air, and I, I looked up, and I saw CNN, and it said, why is Tesla stock dumping? Uh, and I, I just looked up to the Chiron at the bottom of the screen, and I read that, and I thought, because... Uh, <laughs> the Tesla CEO was just on Joe Rogan smoking dope right. and they had no idea and I said at that time that, that's one of the things they're sl so slow to react that by the time and, and it's often when you look at the news it'll be reporting stuff that's been on X for hours I don't know by the time I came in and started doing this show I had checked to see if they've been talking about the 5th Circuit ruling about election having to be counted that day it wasn't on yet it's all over x we're all talking about it but at the time i flipped the switch here they start they haven't even covered that yet that's the beginning of the end mm. this it this will seal its fate it won't happen overnight but this will seal the media's fate if 
Joe Rogan really moves the mm. needle. Uh, what do you think if we went back to the show we've been doing forever, and go back to like 2004 or so, and I said to you, Glenn, in 20 years you're going to predict the media is going to be ended by the host of Fear Factor? Uh, no way. You yeah, would not have, no that way. would not have been a prediction no, you would have agreed never, with at that never. point. That's, That's why amazing. you really don't count anything out. Yeah. So true. I remember that show, Fear Factor? <laughs> Who would have thought that this guy, Joe Rogan, would be it? Well, everyone says that he's it. I think there's he might be a close second. Because I think Tucker Tucker could be could end up being that big as well. And so everyone who laughed and said Tucker got fired from Fox, he got run away, probably the best thing that ever happened to Tucker. Now he owns his own media company. He's doing his own stuff, making documentaries, out there doing his podcasts, interviewing people. And notice what his show length is. This was another thing that I started looking at. And I said, you know, some YouTubers and then some people with brands. Over here, you got people making 10 or 12 minute videos. And they're just running around doing these things. And then you look over here and you see Tucker with an hour and a half, two hour show. And Megan Kelly with an hour and a half, two hour show. Glenn Beck, I believe, is three hours. Joe Rogan, not even sure, but I think his is a couple hours. Patrick Bet David do an hour-long broadcast. They chop them up and put them out, out, out afterwards. Redacted, two hours plus. They build brands, they became known, and they built huge, huge million-plus audiences because people wanted to hear what they have to say. Joe Rogan, I truly believe, in conjunction with Tucker Carlson, is going to usher in the new media. It is going to destroy everything that these people have done, everything that they've built up, which is also why they're going after Elon Musk so bad. Because his platform isn't like here. You can say what you want. You don't have to worry about it. That's why I'm simulcasting this on Twitter. How you doing, Twitter? X. Because it's, it's important to actually do things on another platform that's going to allow you to talk about things. Because these people on CNN, I'm telling you, they're feeling it. Listen to this. This is a quick video. Trump's still not on, so I'm not, not, you're not missing anything. All right, so this, this is what happened today. This was CNN. You got it. This is very short. Show Elon Musk has poured a gargantuan sum, $119 million, into super PACs to elect former President Donald Trump, spending $44 million just this month. That is a lot. But Musk is worth $270 billion and counting. Just yesterday, just want to say this slowly so everybody absorbs this. Just yesterday, he made $33 billion, billion with a B, when Tesla shares shot up. That is according to Bloomberg. In 11 days, we'll see, does that all pay off? David and Jackie are still with me. So you could, you could already hear in their voice, you, without even seeing what's happening, they, you She's going to have a panel up here, and these people on the panel are going to talk about, oh, my God, this, this rich guy who's making all this money is basically betting on Trump, as if Alex Soros and George Soros aren't betting on Kamala or Mark Cuban or uh, what's that other guy's name? Bill Gates. But that's okay. And the reason why it's okay, I'm just going to look you right in the eye, the reason why Soros and Gates and Cuban don't bother them, but Elon does, is because their own survival, just like Glenn just said, their own survival is extremely at risk. They didn't foresee that this man would come in with $44 billion, which now we're finding out is a good day for Elon. He made $33 billion yesterday. He bought X for $44. So in a day and a half, he could cash out. Just mind-boggling. So when you got that kind of wealth, you pretty much can do anything you want. And by the way, hey, can you go up and get these astronauts because they're stuck up there? We don't know. I got you. Boom. They, they came home today. Boeing, all the other people in NASA, we don't know what to do. Hey, well, how are we going to fix it? Call Elon. Well, you know, that taxi ride from... Up there to down here is going to cost you about you know five six billion. Let me know when you want to wire the money, and I'll send the taxi up to go pick them up. 
you know that was a hard phone call for the Biden administration. Yeah, well, Elon, can you go pick up our, our astronauts? Sure, Joe. <laughs> we'll, we'll get right on it. Call me when the wire transfer hits. But what they're terrified about is the platform that he's building. They went all in on Kamala, hoping they would take him down. Trump wins, and, well, you'll hear them in their angst. And now at the table is Teddy Schlieffer, who is a campaign finance reporter for The New York Times. He's straight out of central casting for the white dudes for Harris, isn't he? Pretty, pretty much. You already know where he's coming from. Mm -hmm. Nice to see you. Sure. Welcome back. Thanks. Former <laughs> CNNer. Um, what should we be thinking about when we see and hear those eye-popping numbers? I mean, look, this, this could be just the beginning. I mean, Elon Musk uh, initially was proposed a budget when he started meeting with advisors to consider the super PAC of 150 to $180 million. Um, you know, he's now... Think about that. Dude makes $33 billion in a day, and he had budgeted something like 180 The guy said $180 million. 10% of $33 billion is $3 billion. So we're talking about, yeah, about 2.5%. Let's say, if I do my math, uh, almost 3% of what he made in one day he's putting in his super PAC. Oh, in the, in the ballpark here. Um, you know, I'm, one of the questions I have right now as a reporter is, like, what else is he doing? We're talking. I can tell you what else he's doing. I think you can figure out what he's doing. He's putting your ass out of business. Absolutely. Talking about a super PAC that we all that files with the FEC. We're talking about what he's doing in Pennsylvania. Elon sees this election as existential for democracy. He's almost manic in private conversations about how much Trump needs to win. So it makes you wonder what's not in front of the camera. What's so, happening right so now? Just to be clear, yeah. he thinks that electing Trump saves democracy? In his view, and bear with me here, yeah. um, this could be the last quote unquote free election in America. Because if Donald Trump loses... Listen to what her answer is here. Typical CNN stuff. They don't even realize why their careers are ending. This answer that she gives this man gives you the, the underscoring of why their careers are ending. Democrats will legalize all undocumented immigrants, maybe even relocate them to a couple of swing states, and that there will never be a true Democratic yeah. election. Which of, course, which, of course, is not true. Does she not watch her own station? Democrats are going to legalize all these newcomers and ship them into blue states, and this will be the last... Oh, that's just not true. I'm sorry. That's what they're doing right now. And you're quick to answer to basically gaslight your audiences, oh, that's just not true. Where anyone with the thinking, functioning frontal lobe can see them flying people into the swing states. All these people from all over the place, a gazillion of them, you lost 320,000 kids, but other than the 320,000 kids that were basically collateral damage to you, you've been moving people all around the country, except for Martha's Vineyard, where they said, get the hell out. But this woman on CNN <laughs> just said it's just not true. The, the his, his, it's his view of the world, and, no, that, that, and that explains why the money is, is what it is. And, and how much of his fear of Democrats winning that they will look into what he's doing and all of his um, contracts with the government, his classified status, all the information that he gets, the top secret. Wait, 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 wait. So the man who you just said has contracts with the people that you think are going to investigate him. The people who wrote the contracts, who gave him the contracts, he's worried about what's they're going to investigate the contracts? Is that what you just said? You mean the guy who they had to call 911 space, space taxi, hey, can you go get my astronauts? They're stuck. That's the guy you think is worried about that? No, 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 no. It's not about that. If this guy never worked another day in his life, It'd be kind of hard to spend just what he made in one day. $33 billion one day? Yeah, I'd be on an island somewhere. <laughs> so that's not it. Information of America. 
Yeah, look, I mean, it's not, would not be the first donor to, to get involved in politics, not solely out of the goodness of his heart, but uh, clearly, <laughs> clearly he has an incentive for, for Trump to win. Um, let's listen to some of what Elon Musk has said on, sort of along those lines, on the issue of what he calls disinformation. Disinformation is a propaganda word. Uh, it, it's, it's not a, it, it's, well, who's, who's going to decide what's disinformation? The government? That's crazy. The narratives that are important should be the narratives that the people as a whole think are important, not what a, you know, a, a, a few a media oligarchs think is important. You were there, right? Yeah, I was, I was, I was at one of those, one yeah. of the Elon events, yeah. So he's saying it's, it's not what a few media oligarchs think is important. I guess he's referring to himself. No, he's talking about you. He's talking about MSNBC. He's talking about CBS that edits interviews. He's talking about all that stuff that you, the mainstream media, as so-called mainstream media, he's talking about what you guys have been doing. Walk down across the street and go talk to Joy Reid. Listen to her any Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, whenever her shows are on. Go listen to her. And yet there are all these discussions about where we are right now in the campaign and the fact that he is in charge of a very powerful social media platform, X, formerly known as Twitter, and the algorithms feel different, just as it Yeah, she's right. You see, they don't like that. I think it was Elon or, or Doge who actually wrote, when you're in charge of oppression, and then you're no longer in charge of oppression, and equality is put in place, it feels like oppression to you. It's, it seems like it's no, no longer fair because people like me and people like you can now talk equitably on this platform where before we didn't have to listen to these people on the right, these scoundrels. We just delete them. So yeah, honey, it's, it's a lot different. The user. In fact, on, on Monday, Elon Musk was not in Pennsylvania, but he's actually in New York having dinner with Rupert Murdoch, another person who is, you know, one of these evil, evil media moguls, they're talking. <laughs> they can't help themselves. They deserve to die. Not, not physically, I'm not saying. I'm talking about the network. CNN deserves to have their demise. In politics, I've reported. Um, and look, I mean, Elon is, to, to compare his comments uh, in the past to what he's doing today is almost not even worth the airtime. I mean, mm -hmm. Elon a couple of years ago had said, he tries to stay out of politics right. and has no interest in doing anything in the political realm. Um, and now he's the main character. It, it, it's an amazing transformation to watch. And I always think, if I had as much money as Elon Musk, why would I give any of it to a politician? But that's another matter, I guess. But Come on, Fluffy. <laughs> Put your resume together, go start a podcast, and find out how few people even want to hear what you have to say. Many of your colleagues are finding that out. Don Lemon used to work on CNN. His podcast went down the tubes. Nobody cared. See, if it wasn't for CNN and this panel and this stage and their television and their microphones, nobody would hear from you guys ever again. Because um, you want to make more money. <laughs> and keep that money. There you go. Um, I feel like I could be happy with that, though. Just like what he has right now. But anyway, sorry. But I am... But, but, it's not just going to be an election rule, right? I mean, that's the, if Donald Trump wins the presidency, or actually, I guess, even if he doesn't, it's hard to imagine him just giving up on this and backing away from this at this point. So, so what does Elon Musk's role look like in terms of his incredible influence in a Trump administration or in the world of a Harris administration? I would imagine he still wants to play on the big stage. Well, he's playing on the international stage apparently right now. Um, according to the Wall Street Journal, there's new reporting that he's been having secret conversations with Vladimir Putin. Oh, no, secret conversations with Putin. So he's just like Trump. He's a Putin puppet is what you're saying. Do you know who was in the space station? Do, do you know that the, the people in the space station just weren't American astronauts, that there were Russian astronauts up there? Do you not think that perhaps that they had some secrets that they were doing, whatever they were doing up there? You think they were just sharing everything with the Americans, or did they possibly have some secrets? Did Elon have to talk to Putin? T 
to arrange how these guys were going to come down and how they needed to be, be taken care of. All the communications, all the data that his team had. Do you think he had to share something with them? Because, I don't know, I'm going up to transport your astronauts down here. I don't know what they're carrying. I don't know what they're getting in my ship. Yeah, I want to have a secret conversation with you because I want to know before they get in my ship what they're carrying and, and all this kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm pretty sure he had a secret conversation or two with Putin and his allies because you're getting in my ship, my gazillion dollar ship, and I don't want somebody on the way down to have a, you know, a dead man switch and go, boom, what are you doing here? Are we going to be okay? We got this? And these people are complete, utter morons. Utter. Right, which is why I think if, if he does end up a part of the government, even more so than he is right now with the, the contracts that you were, you were talking about, uh, th this this could be um, problematic. It, it could be, I mean, he, he's already very powerful, but with uh, having involvement with government, even more so. So, thank you. Thanks for that discussion. Thanks for bringing the poll uh, to us. And thanks for bringing your great reporting on Elon. Man, there's some sphincter tightening there, boy.